So we've got a lot of data over the last couple of weeks about hot AI companies, companies like these. And we've noticed some interesting trends. The first trend, which is maybe the most worrying, is that a company, I'm not going to say any names here, but one of the hottest companies in the world for AI, uh, we had an experience where a candidate went through their interview process for a management position. And on the job description, there were, you know, requirements of management position. And then they go through the interview process. And then this company waited until the very end to ask them, how do you feel about managing a team of agents? So it is a reality now that some companies are going to want you to manage agents, even though they wouldn't say it up front, because it's not exactly socially acceptable in this job market to be saying that perhaps we're not exactly sure. But um, on the other side, that's less doom and gloom about AI. Uh, a lot of jobs are being created that weren't here before. Uh, the most obvious one is the the forward deployed engineer or the deployed engineer. If you go back to 2018, the only company on the market that was popular that would have this role would be Palantir. Fast forward 2025, a good one third of the companies on this list are hiring forward deployed engineers or deployment engineers. If you're a software engineer or a PM that wants to sit in the middle of software engineering and product management, this could be a great fit for you. It's basically somebody who like is embedded with customers, learns what the customer wants, and then either build stuff for them or make stuff for them or give stuff back to the team that the team can then make stuff for them. So really cool new role. Another cool role, um, that we've got a little bit less data on, but still seems interesting is this design engineer, which is more about a combination of a designer and an engineer, which sounds pretty cool. Um, another interesting trend, which is a little bit more resulting in a negative candidate experience is that the job description for a lot of these companies, it won't mention that they want somebody to be really well-versed in LLMs. And then you get to the interview and they're just grilling you on really low level or like very detailed LLM stuff, like grilling you about RAG, grilling you about LLM generated code when the job description didn't say that. So we don't know what to really do about this yet, but we are noticing more negative experiences from candidates going into rounds and they're experiencing stuff that they weren't prepared for, namely about AI at these AI companies. So it makes sense, but it just like creates this kind of confusion of what roles do I apply for? Don't make it overcomplicated. You should still be aiming for roles where you have 30 to 70% of the job duties. And if you don't actually have the fit for something in real time that that might just be the way it is but otherwise if you do have that extra experience that could be a huge selling point another thing that we're noticing is these hot ai companies are very specific candidates are noping out of interview processes more than they usually do you do a call you get a bad taste in your mouth from a company and you just say you know what this isn't for me maybe it's the working hours maybe it's the implications Maybe it's the, hey, do you want to manage a team of agents thing? But we're just noticing this more. But what else? Yeah, another thing, some of these companies are doing leak code and some of them are. not And the ones that aren't are really looking like they have a really solid process. Stay tuned for more trends and more interesting findings in this new world of hot AI companies. Thanks for watching. For your interviews, break a leg.